Blessings, everyone. Welcome to another broadcast, another time with God. It's uh, Thursday, uh, May 14. It's time to be uh, to study the Word of God, be, be with God. Amen. So we're going to start with prayer. I'm Pastor Emilio Mesa, pastor of Highland Avenue Baptist Church. This has been around seven weeks already, but we've been close in our church. But still, God's Word is not <laughs> close. It's, we're still broadcasting. We're, not, we're out there still. We're still moving forward. We're still uh, um, out there. Um, we're still getting the word out out there. Amen. So let's, let's start in prayer. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come into the homes. To everybody watching, me, I pray that you will bless everybody that is going to watch tonight. And that we only, only become hearers but also doers of your word. Be obedient to your word, Father. There's nothing more pleasing to you. Everybody watching, and just uh, we go to the Word of God and just out of the Bible, just let's just go out of the Bible, just that's all we got to do. So, um, today I want to talk to you about Christian responsibilities. We have Christian responsibilities, and so we just want to start with the Word of God. Um, what we saw, and remember what we see. Or what we find out, and I'm talking about God's word, we must announce it. You know, God talks in different ways. Sometimes you could be driving, and you can uh, see in a billboard some, the answer that you've been looking for, that you need. But sometimes we're not looking for that answer, so we just let it go by. But somebody can give us an advice, and uh, we don't like the advice, but that's what God wants, and that's what we need to do. We need to... Pay attention to what God is saying to us, what He's telling us. You know, our His thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. His ways are not our ways. So we have to get in tune with God. And the only way to get in tune with God is we have to keep we have to keep asking Him every morning when we get up. It's like Moses, Father God, if you're not, if you don't go with me, I'm not going anywhere. You know, tell Him every morning. Every night when you go to bed, you you tell him, God, you know, guard my dreams. God, my, you know, as I sleep, guard my sleep. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse, verse 16 and 20. You know, uh, this is the living word why, why God called us. And he called us to be watchmen. He called, us to be, he called us to be witnesses of his word. He gave us commands. And that's why we, we have to learn this. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 20, it says, Now it came to pass, at the end of seven days, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. We see here that God is saying, I call you to be my watchman. Nobody's watchman. You know, since church started, a lot of people, a lot of pastors, a lot of preachers, a lot of teachers, they think they are being the watchmen of a group of people and that, you know, got together in church and now they're, they're committed. They can tell the pastor what to do. That is wrong. The church needs to learn this, that if they follow these guidelines, listening, okay, listening to, the, to a committee of people telling them what to do instead of listening to the Holy Spirit, that will be a, a church without the power of God. Walking in their own strength. And you have to be careful. We need to become, you know, the watchman of God. And, 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 and allowing ourselves to be led and guided by His Holy Spirit. Verse 18. When I say to the wicked. Look, he's talking now. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. And you give them no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way. To save his life. That 
wicked men shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require require at at your hand. C can you listen to me? Can you hear this? Are you paying attention? He says, if you are not being a watchman, if you're not being a witness for our Lord Jesus Christ, if you're not sharing Christ with others, and those people pass you by and they die, he says, God, is, he's, their blood is in your hands. And you can say, well, that's in the Old Testament. Well, the Bible says God is the same with yesterday, today, and forever. So take it either way. You can believe it or don't believe it. It's on your hands anyway. <laughs> Sharing Christ, that's a lifestyle of a Christian, of a true Christian. That's our responsibility. We need to be sharing Christ whether they listen to us or not. That is between them and God. Mark chapter 16, verse 19 and 20 says clearly that as the disciples went out and started sharing Christ and started doing the things that God told them to do, he said that the God was confirming everything was behind him, confirming everything they were doing. Now, now, now imagine this. What, what, what he's saying here that uh, uh, God and his angels are behind us, confirming everything we do for our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we do for our Lord Jesus Christ, God is confirming behind us. That means our hands been washed. Now we have a right for to come to God, and, and, and He can, you know, just grant us whatever request we want. Now we're not doing it to to get a, a you know, request granted. We do it because we are grateful, and when we are grateful, God will reward us. God will care for us. God will take care of us, and and as and then we don't have to worry about our family because God will do His best also to save our family. Verse nineteen again. Yet if you want, yet if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. See whether they listen or not, your hands are gonna be clean. And the Bible says our hands need to be clean in order to come to the presence of God for our with our prayer requests. And now, he's talking about the wicked. And now when we talk to the righteous, to the Christians. He says, again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity. And I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered but his blood I will require of your hand. Now, he, he, if he follows his iniquity, what he's saying, if, if a righteous man, if a Christian goes after their own thinking, their own mind, that's what iniquity is, and start walking on their own ways, he says, and you don't tell them that they're walking in their own ways, that it's worldly what they're doing, instead of the spiritually, he says, I'm going to demand from you their blood also. I will put a stumble a stumble block on them. They will surely die, but I will demand their blood from you, he says. But if you tell them and they don't turn from their wicked ways, your hands are going to be clean. So now God is saying here, we need to be a witness for our Lord Jesus Christ to tell, to talk to the wicked people, the worldly people, the unbelievers, but also to the believers that have turned away from God. Many believers have turned away from God. You know, they started good, but started following their own opinions, their own thinking, and they are, their lifestyle is not aligned with the Word of God. We need to get back. We need to examine the Word of God. We need to align our lives with the Word of God. Amen? So whatever we see or whatever we find out in, 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 in our walk, that we know that is wrong for, for, for us, we need to tell the people. You know, there's a lot of videos going around right now uh, on everything that's going on with, with all of this. We need to examine those videos also with what's going on with the Word of God. And we need to warn the people, even when we get in trouble. If we're following the Word of God, 
we have to be obedient to God. We are to obey the authorities. Yes, we are supposed to obey authorities. Every authority that is not going against God's word, we have to obey it. So, and stay at peace with the people. Be praying for the people. You know, God is in control of this world. God is in control of everything. He has not forgotten us. He is in control of your life and my life. We are being tested right now to see how faithful we are. God is, is calling us, come back. I want you to walk with me. The Bible says he will provide. He will care for everyone that fears him and loves him and obeys him. Loves him and obeys him. Fears him and obeys him. You need to be obedient to his word. And you can't do it on your own. You need the Holy Spirit. That's what it, that's what prayer is for. You have to remember that one day we are going to be accountable to God for what we announce or did not announce, meaning what we witness or did not witness about the Word of God, about sharing Christ with others. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. One day everyone in existence, everyone that even have died, everyone is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day. And we're going to be accountable for everything we've done. We must never worry about what's going around uh, around us. But be focused always on God's will over our lives. Let's worry about what God wants from us. And let God worry about what we need. You know, I have learned through the years, in these 25 years that I've been pastoring, that as I do God's word, God cares and takes care of my family. I don't have to worry about it. Follow God. How? Align your life. Align your life with the Word of God. Amen? That's what you need to do. All Christians have the responsibility to be preparing daily. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. This is the story of ten virgins. Okay? This is the story about the ten, virg about the ten virgins. Now, the ten virgins represent the church. Listen to this. The ten virgins represent the church. The husband represents Jesus. The husband represents Jesus. The lamp, the lamp represents the commandments. The light represents the teaching of the Bible. And the oil represents fruit or, or anointing. And it's personal. No one can give you their anointing. It's personal. You cannot share your anointing with no one, but others can be blessed by your anointing. We need to we need to be careful on, the, on these things. And so, how how do we compare the, the all of this? Look at we look at what the, the what it says, verse one through thirteen. Then then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out. To meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise. And five were foolish. Those who were foolish. Took their lamps. And took no oil with them. But the wise took oil. And their vessel with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed. They, sh they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they when to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, 
Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, And surely I say to you, Do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Is coming. Do we get this? Remember, the ten virgins represent the church. How is your church? How is our church? The husband represents Jesus Christ. Are we ready for Jesus Christ? Are we taking care of his bride? The lamp is the commandments, meaning the Bible. The light is the teaching. How are we teaching the people the Bible? The oil is the anointing, is the fruit. What we're giving out, what, we're, what is what is in, in us, the fruit. Are we giving fruit out? Are we anointed? Meaning, are we aligned with the Word of God? The anointing is personal. You cannot give it to nobody. It's given to us. We have to be real, real careful in all of this. Now, the, the Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27 tells us, you know, uh, uh, some, some kind of teaching, something like that too. So, so we need to be careful right here. And Matthew, uh, here, uh, 7. And we'll get it right here. Matthew 7, verse 24 and 25. Look at what it says about the wise virgins. And this is talking about obeying the word of God. That when we listen to the teachings, when we listen to God's word and we obey it, meaning the wise uh, virgins, says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. Now he's talking about the wise virgins here. They were ready. Same as when we build our lives on, on the foundation, which is the Bible, we're standing firm on the Bible. And it says, no matter what, it comes our way. No matter what is coming on our way. It says, it's not going to affect us. Because we're standing on the rock, meaning we are on the hand of God and no one can snatch us out of his hand. He is our caretaker. He is our provider. Economy does not affect him. He is the owner of the world. He is the owner of everything. Of everything. And we have to remember, we are not going to live forever in this world. We're moving on. We're moving out of this world. This is a new world that God has been building, us for, building for us, that he has for us. The inheritance. We're going to be living in a world that there is no hurting, there is no pain, there is no bad memory, there is no more death. I mean, imagine a place like that, which it, 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 and it says that the streets are built of gold, which means it's purity there. I mean, the water is so clear, everything, I mean, that is life, there's no worries, and, and the sun is not going to be there, because God is going to be our light, which is not going to be cold. It's not going to be hot. Imagine all of this. There's not going to be no war no more. There's not going to be no more infirmities. Can you imagine this? All the storms came. All these worries, worries came to this man that built his house on the, on the rock. Nothing happened to it, it says. But what happened to the foolish women? The what happened to the foolish virgins? Well, then verse 26 and 27 out of Matthew, Matthew 7, verse 26 and, 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 and 27 says, What happened to them? It says, But everyone who hears there's these sayings, sayings of mine, meaning God's word, and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Now, why you keep on worrying? Don't worry anymore. 
You know what's a, what's a, what is the best thing here? That every morning is a new day of mercy, a new day of beginning. So even now, you can tell God, says God, I'm sorry, I did not know. If you confess yourself and your failings, and you get right with God, His Word says clearly that if you are sincere, if you are sincere, everything you have done is erased, and there's a new beginning for you. The condition is that you don't do, you don't go back anymore, that you don't do that anymore. You will be forgiven forever. You will have a brand new start, not only you, but as a family. You can just follow the Lamb, follow the life, follow the Word of God, and you're going to be doing okay. That's, that's, a prom that's not my promise, that's God's promise. You know, he gives, us, he gives us a story here of the ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. Then compare it to, the, to, the, to Matthew 7, verse 24, 27, it's more clear. And then uh, Proverbs 1, 7, look at what it says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or wisdom. But fools despise wisdom and instructions. So who is the one that's not going to listen to God's word, that is not going to obey it? They are not going to align their word. Well, I'm not saying that God's word saying it. They are fools. And they are going to be having troubles every day until they learn that we can only walk and do things God's way. We're not perfect. We're never going to be perfect. But if we keep following God and asking Him for help and we keep reading His Word and getting right with God, I mean, we can have the best deal. Even when things are falling apart, we can be okay. We can do all right. We can be all right. Why? Because God says this, and I want to believe what God says. I'm not going to believe what somebody, what man comes and tells me. I'm going to believe what God says. The Bible says that we are not afraid. <laughs> Bad news does not affect us. God will show us what to do with good, with good or bad news. If we are following Him. If we are listening to Him. Now God gave, God gave us His commandments to have and live in peace. You and I, these were commandments. And God says, this is the way, this is what we were supposed to be doing for us to have peace. And if we lost peace, something went wrong. And we need to get back. Look at what it says. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 through 8. Therefore I exhort. First of all. There's supplic that supplications. Prayers. Intercessions. And giving of thanks. Be made for all men. For kings and all who are in authority. That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life. And all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified, to be testified in due time. For which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth and in Christ not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire therefore that the man pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Now God said it. And sometimes I have spoken to people. And, and I have told them, you know, to pray for president. President Trump, pray for the, I mean, find out who's the chief of police, find out who is your mayor, you know, pray for these people and your city. But start praying for the president. And, and some people will even get nasty and say, I don't like the president. I don't like this. I don't like, see, God is not asking you whether you like him or not. He said to pray for your president. He said to pray and love your enemy. That's what it says. The Bible says we are supposed to be praying for our, our, 
our enemy. We are supposed to be helping the poor. We are supposed to be doing Why don't we do that? Because we do not know what the Bible says. Hosea 4.6 clearly says that we are having so much trouble. We are being defeated by doubts and other things because of the lack of knowledge, because we don't know what the Bible says. It says, and because of that reason, read Hosea 4.6. Because of that reason, he also forgets us. That means he doesn't pay attention to us. Not only that, he says, our children get affected. They are affected because of us. Because we are stubborn. We are stubborn. Our children get affected. Our children are paying a price because of our mistakes. And instead of humbling ourselves, asking God for forgiveness, asking God to help us to get right with him, you know, we are more stubborn. We are get, we get more rebellious and we keep doing our own thing like we don't need God. And then soon we find, we see our children messing up and we still don't wake up. My brothers and sisters, wake up. Our children. Our children are being affected. And today is a good day. Today we can come back to God. We can confess our sins. We can confess our, 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 our rebellion. We can confess what we didn't know or things like that. However it comes up, but make it a sincere confession. Get right with God and help Him to help you read the Word, to understand the Word. Get right with God. With God. And this is also is going to affect your children. It's going to affect your children and your grandchildren for good. When you and God, and when you and I, Confess Him as our personal Savior. Not only that, our sins. Let's get right with God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to study your word tonight. I pray that my brothers and sisters watching now or watching later, that they can come to you clean. That they can confess whatever is, is in them. Examine each one of us. And just give you whatever is not aligned with you, Father. And help us to get aligned in your word. Be obedient to your word. Not only hearers of your word, but also doers of your word, Father. Help us to become true witnesses of your word. With the help and the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. I thank you for everyone listening. Bless them. Bless, we bless tonight, Father, President Trump. Lead him, guide him all the days of his life, and lead and guide this nation, Father. We pray, Father, that coronavirus is not going to affect us at all, or our families, Father. We are going to defeat it in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. That we will become one nation again, Father, in your name. As a church, as a city, as a nation, Father. Help us to become one family, a strong family in your Father making you number one in our lives. Forgive us, Father. And I pray that if anyone is listening that has not accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray that you will help them, that you, that our uh, uh, brothers and sisters that are listening, they will lead them, they will guide them to Jesus Christ, and they will start a new life, Father, and a new transformation. Father, accept anyone today, Father, that is confessing you. And hear our pleas, hear our prayer today. Bless your word, tattoo your word, and everyone listening and watching today. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Bless you. Until next time. Amen. God bless you.